Why hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea Silvestro and today is a very different video than what we're used to. I know it's been a little bit since I ta sat down and talked to the camera where I'm not reacting, but today is one of those videos. But today is special because this is something that I've never done before. I've never really played with this. Donner, oh gosh I don't want, I have this camera angle up here so I don't want to mess it up. But Donner sent me the B1 synth bass and I am someone who knows very limited about synths so I kind of went on this synth journey recently where I'm just trying to learn everything, trying to learn how to use it and I wanted to use it in some practical ways but also kind of give you guys a newbie's version and in terms of how to use something such as this because I was very overwhelmed when I started but I just kind of played around watched a few videos etc so let's get on with this video together I also included all the information in the description of where to buy it and my links it's $129 total it's honestly a little wild just feel free to check me out support me in the description so I'm with my B1 today we just have it plugged in with the XLR cables directly into my interface and then I have my headphone on just so I can actually hear what's going on then I have it plugged in to the power supply and that's how it's powered but there's aux in sync in sync out you can also make it midi but I don't have that right now I just have the XLR cable right now but that's essentially our setup so as I mentioned earlier I truthfully have truthfully have very limited experience with synths but the basics that I know are that synths are an electronic musical instrument that essentially generates audio signals by generating waveforms and then essentially all these knobs are adjusting that in some kind of way. Before we go into all the effects, I just wanted to briefly talk about what we have here. You can use, there are 128 different patterns that are in here. Just press play. This is pattern four, this is pattern five. You change these with the arrow keys. You can click whatever. It sounds fun. It sounds a little chaotic. But you can also program different patterns in there, which we can go into in a bit. You can just click the notes that you want and then it'll play that in that order and that's super easy. As well as we have the ability to, to use the arpeggiator. Goes up and down with the notes in different directions and there's different patterns of arpeggiators as well which you adjust by clicking the arrow keys. And another thing is you can also hold the arpeggi arpeggio. Pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna kind of use that right now to demonstrate what all the knobs do. So briefly, we're gonna go through this. Okay, so let's just have like something going on right now. We'll, we'll just record something right now. I started by clearing the pattern and then pressing the right notes in the correct order that I wanted and then pressed play. Very easy, very self-explanatory. Okay, so we just got the main like str Stranger Things-esque theme. The way we can change this by tempo is you can either tap tempo or you can just adjust it with the arrow keys. It's kind of cool, like the cool that you can program things in. We're just gonna go through all the knobs very fast. Okay, waveform. So on this B1, there's two different waves. The top is sawtooth, the bottom is square. From my understanding of it, a square wave sounds a little sharper and clearer, while the sawtooth wave is a little more buzzy. It's like fatter in sound. We got that. Pitch. Pretty self-explanatory, just messes up the pitch. Then moving on, we have this filter, which is the most important part of the synth. I think it gives it the most character in general. It's one of the most identifi identifiable parts of the sound. A filter is essentially removing certain frequencies from the synth and completely changes the sound. It can make it harsher, it can make it more aggressive, it can make it more smooth and dramatic. So the cutoff knob is essentially controlling the brilliance of the sound. This knob is controlling which frequencies are cut off. If you raise it up, it means that the higher frequencies are going to come through, but if it's lower, it's going to be lower signals that are allowed to pass through. So essentially, that's why you kind of hear the higher registers and higher frequencies versus lower. So that's like one of the most important parts. The resonance knob controls the gain at that cutoff frequency point. So how large the waveform is, which ties into volume. So the larger the knob, the stronger the gain. You hear that. Depth. And depth essentially makes the top and bottom of the waveform even taller or shorter than before. I, the higher the depth, the more noticeable the effect. I personally just hear kind of, it just feels like a little shriller and harsher compared to more smooth and connected. That's kind of how my ears hear it. But that's essentially the filter that's really important. So if you want like the higher registers, this is where you kind of would go for that. So. It starts getting a little bit, ooh. But this is raising the gain. Do you hear that? The 
which chin you were changing this. I think for the most part, that's kind of like the main thing that you're gonna be playing with at that point. So moving on to the decay, this is how long it takes for the sound to go to its minimum volume. So if it's a higher, higher decay, it's gonna take longer. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the accent knob. There's this accent button that you can have pressed which just makes the synth accented. And this is just how high that is. Moving on to our fun effects. So these are turned on and off. Saturation and delay. So essentially it's saturation. On, drive is the gain, how much, of the, how much of it you're getting. Tone is the brightness of the distortion. The larger the value, the brighter the tone. So that's what that means. But saturation was something I didn't fully understand. I think it's like something that you can hear better. It just kind of raises the gain and then makes it a little punchier in my personal opinion. It just kind of like stands out more. And then this makes it brighter. It just kind of makes it more harsh, I feel. And then this is just more muted. That's kind of my ears explanation for it. Then delay, turn it on and off. Level is the volume of the delay sound. The time is how long the delay is. <laughs> and the feedback is how much delay is fed back to the input. So more feedback creates a greater number of echoes. I did my research on this. That's no delay. It's a little crazy. Okay, so that's everything that you need to know, kind of broken down as to what everything does. But I think the biggest thing is just honestly play with the instrument. You'll be able to understand what you like, what you don't like. This little menu, we'll kind of go into that right now. So as I was saying, you can record things onto here, which all you do is you, you kind of go through your patterns. You go, oh, record and edit. And then you can just clear, hold clear and reset and it'll reset. Then you can just literally, then you're good. Post play, you're there. You can save it and do all that, but there's tons of patterns, etc. Um, you can also do the arpeggiator, as I mentioned. And there's all these additional things, like you can have a slide in there. Slide is sliding from one note to the next. It makes it more connected. Accent, just accents it. Yeah, those are, those are the main things that I use. The arpeggiator, of course. Hold. Change the type of arpeggiator. And then t uh, you can always adjust tempo, which is you can tap or you can write it as I said before. Octave you can change as well, easy. That's what all this means. So like octave, arrow keys, tap tempo, play stop, record, clear, etc. So essentially the way that it is right now, the patterns you can switch between. And if you wanted to go between one and the other, you'd have to just press the arrow keys, which isn't always the most convenient. Like if I'm playing this, it wouldn't be as easy, but they added song mode, which you have to update your firmware with the Donner plugin. But if you press pattern twice, it brings up song mode. As I mentioned, every one of these is acts as its own kind of database. If I'm programming this to be pattern one, it'll be pattern one. I can program this to eight, nine, ten, and then I can just click it on command instead of having to go through the arrow keys. So essentially that's like the smarter way to do it. They added that. You can program that. So you see how it's like going through different ones? Because I programmed every single one to be a different pattern. Three, see? That's something helpful. And the important part about that is you can chain up 16 different patterns. So it extends your chain from 16 to 256 precisely. So that's that. I wanted to also play Fun Walking Dead and then use this in a song because I know that this is more of an educational type video, but I also did want to do something fun with it. I've been playing around with it. It's been a lot to kind of learn how it all works, like use it in a context that's interesting, but I learned how to play the Walking Dead thing theme, which I thought was fun. I mean, honestly, I was like, I need to learn how to do that, but let's play it. There are also 16 different keys that represent the 16 different notes that you can program into every pattern. It is very easy to go back and edit them once they are recorded. Yes, I got it. Sometimes it takes me like a few tries, but this is me from the future just 
popping in here to say this. You can also go through all the so all the notes that you've played once you've recorded them. Like if you go through the arrow keys and you can adjust them. So if you wanna like, if you messed up with this, you can just click that and it'll change it. Yeah, so you can just like adjust it that way. That took me a little bit to understand. Okay, now we can play around with the filters and all that. That's with no saturation, that's with saturation. You see it just kind of boosts the game. <laughs> with the pitch. That was like the fun stuff. Now let's get on to using it in a song. So I really love when the patterns are going, but I also do love a good arpeggiator. I think that's like one of the easier things to do. A lot of songs use this as like background or something. It's just kind of cool to build a track on. You can add accents. You can also program accents and slides into it as well. It's really cool. I feel like I'm proud of myself for learning this. But let's use it for a song right now and let's do it. <laughs> so I made this song. I started with the drum. The drums, I looked up this drum tutorial. I've been kind of on that grind with the techno vibes. Like I'm just trying to make like a techno banger. I made this drum loop and just used the kit and logic. Honestly, I couldn't really explain it to you very well. Four on the floor, AKA bass on every single note. So we're gonna record the vocals first, actually, and then move on from there. This is just a song that I wrote a while ago. It's kind of a banger in this context. A new sound to respond to me. I guess your master's in counseling is working. And all I want is to see you. All I want is to see you tonight. All I want is to see you tonight. All I want is to see you. I totally got distracted and just started like messing around with the song. It's just gonna be very simple. We're just gonna add the synth underneath with an arpeggiator as well as um, just a pattern. I'm on pattern eight right now. This song I think has the chords E major. So I just put E major into the loop and we're just gonna loop it. Okay, that was my really quick little rendition at the very end. Just some fun vocals, a few synths layered on top of that. And that's essentially it. I think it's a really fun instrument. It's forced me to be creative for the first time in a while. Like I haven't opened Logic in a hot second. And I'm so glad that it did that. I thank very much Donna for sending this to me. Yeah, if you don't really know, my main instrument is usually guitar and singing, but it was really fun to play around with this today. 
I had a good time. If you have any questions, let me know. I tried to break down the features in a more rudimentary kind of way because I'm still new to this whole world. I don't fully understand all of it either. I just think if you want to check it out, it's $128. I think it's a great option if you're trying to get into the synth world but you don't want to spend a bunch of money. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys for watching this far. If you did, feel free to check out my music and everything. Things will be coming soon now that I'm in my techno era, but I'll see you guys soon. Go try new hobbies and try to learn new things. This is the encouragement that you were looking for. Bye! And this city's never had something for me As you know from all of my stories